Rocky bye baby on the treetop when the wind blows the creek. Go. Uh huh. And this one. And now you're there. Yeah. Yeah. They're underneath. That's right. <laughs> Ecological intervention is a process of helping children progress through the shared effort of parents, teachers, and the children themselves. This film is the story of six children, each challenged with disabilities and special needs. It is the story of how they could find their own unique path of learning through collective hard work, understanding, and loving care. Dr. Frank Fesser is our old mentor and recently retired executive director of PEP, Ohio's largest mental health agency. He's been involved in working with troubled children since the early 70s. At the time, ecological intervention was at the forefront of a new vision of therapy. The whole re-education concept is working with kids in their environment and their families. The mental illness is not necessarily an illness, it's an imbalance in the ecology so that the child's home, school, and community somehow were functioning until an event occurred that threw that off balance. For us, ecological intervention became a major theme in our own work in helping children find healing through their own bodies and minds. Profound change requires a profound intervention, especially with kids who have been traumatized. There are um, neural pathways that are developed in the brain that are, are there, they're locked in. We now know through scientific evidence the relationship is the key element in a therapeutic event that changes kids. It doesn't matter what approach you use. If you have a relationship, kids are going to grow. If you don't have a relationship, kids are not. In the summer of 2018, we invited a small group of families to bring their children to our studio in Toronto. Our aim was to try to create a holistic environment, an ecological garden, where the children could physically grow, blossom, and flourish. Nothing that I've been through with Ava has spoken to her love of movement. I kind of have big hopes. I try to curb myself. Kind of push the boundaries as to what she can do. We're going to do whatever it takes to, to give them every chance to reach that potential. I want Amaya to walk. I'm not going to say it's, it's going to work. I'm just going to see how every day, you know, take every, each day as it comes. On the first days of the intensive, we spend a lot of time helping the children become more aware and active with their bodies. Though these early sessions are filled with laughter and play, we're all aware of the deep stories each child brings to the community. Malia has cerebral palsy. It began at birth. The hospital made a mistake. She lost oxygen during delivery. She was dying inside of me, and they thought they were listening to her heartbeat, but they were listening to mine. Uh, thank God her cognition is intact. She understands everything. She has a sense of humor, but physically 
She's 12 years old and hasn't walked, and her words are uh, difficult to understand, but we take the time to listen to her. The early teaching process involves discovering the diverse needs of each child. We explore, observe, and try new things. Bridget is our oldest student at 15 years old. Well, Bridget has uh, cerebral palsy. and She was born 11 weeks premature. Um, and so she has something called periventricular leukomalacia. It's kind of like the, the insulator on a wire. So the signals kind of bleed out of the wires they're supposed to be going through to other wires effectively. So she doesn't have fine motor control or as a result. With a steel rod in her spine from a recent surgery, we really don't know what Bridget can or cannot do. Touch my hands, both hands. I know, it's very hard. That's it, now touch what? this hand towards me. You good, you good, you good. You good, good? That's it, this one too. I'll help you. That's it. Sophia has come from England and is the youngest child in the program. Her condition undiagnosed. She has global development delay. She's off 23 months now and she's, she has not met her milestones. She's unable to sit, crawl or, or, or walk. Our challenges for her is obviously just have that independence to do what she wants. I feel like she's got a strong heart, definitely, and, and she just needs the tools to, to, uh, to, to be moving. Kavita and Amaya have come from India, where services for children with disabilities can often lag behind those available in North America. Amaya's condition was undiagnosed when she was born. So Amaya was born a very perfectly normal child the pediatrician or the gynac, no one mentioned anything. The first sign was when her head holding was late, delayed. And that's when I kind of, you know, wondered what's happening. Oh, here we go. Okay. Amaya did not receive her diagnosis of CP until recently, just before her eighth birthday. Kavita believes Amaya has been traumatized by the treatment she's received in India thus far. Amaya's challenge is definitely the fact that she cannot walk independently. Her association with walking is very painful. It's painful memories. Her challenge definitely is the scarred memories that she has. She is worried, you know, that she's being taken for therapies which she just does not like. Ashir is three years old and was brought to our program from Colorado by his grandparents, Wayne and Patty. Ashir's little sister suffers from cancer and childcare has been an immense challenge for the entire family. Um, Asher was born full term but had complications during the labor. Had an MRI and they found that he had uh, moderate to severe brain damage um, and currently is diagnosed with um, dystonic cerebral palsy. Biggest challenges for Asher probably include um, just mobility in general, so not being able to get to the things that he wants. Um, but I also think communication is a really big part of that too. Uh, I think that he can communicate in his own way to his family, um, but it's really hard for other people to understand. <laughs> you have to believe that your kid is gonna have more in their life than, than what they have right now. I don't know, I guess that's, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> what other choices do you have, you know? Yeah, yeah. So. Ava, our last child, is six years old and is challenged with autism and Kleefstra syndrome, a rare genetic disease. Excited to go home? Hey? <laughs> yeah. Ava's mother, Jessica, has come mostly alone to Toronto. After a quick dinner at a local restaurant, she rushes to put Ava to bed. Ava has sensory processing issues, so like the longer we take, the harder it is for me. I run the risk of getting her overstimulated right before bed, and then we'll be up till 4 a.m. Okay, 
okay, when I first saw the stairs, I cried. There's the falling, there's just a lot of, I guess, fears. So a staircase can feel like three hours, even though it's 30 seconds. I'm usually on from the moment I wake up. I would say I'm high alert. Hey, look at those white teeth. Care for Ava is a 24 seven responsibility. She has to be fed, clothed, toileted, and constantly monitored for safety. For Jessica, the routine requires patience and creativity. Without a, a real communication system, it's hard for her to cue bedtime. So that's why sometimes I move like a string or something in front of her so she'll like bat at it. Lately, she's been going to bed at 10.30, kind of wake up at 2, and then usually I feed her at 4.30. And then she wakes up around, I guess, she'll wake up like for the day around six, but I'll try to keep her in bed with me until like seven. Yeah, I'll be like 7.30, yeah. Early in the intensive, we bring the children outside to experience the freedom of nature. Away from the studio, the change can bring out new qualities of joy and courage in children. We have just discovered that Bridget is a daredevil, aren't you Bridget? Are you? Yeah. <laughs> all your muscles. I'm going to put my hands again and I want you to relax wherever I put my hand here. The main goal in Bridget's early sessions is to awaken new areas in her body and give her new movement experiences that stimulate her motivation to learn. Like you're sleeping. I thought the first private session Bridget had went extremely well. To me it seemed like it was really effective that, that, that they were kind of getting her to do these incremental things, you know, like now move your hand over here, try to touch my hand, to achieve an overall bigger outcome, but they were really coaching her through each step. So she was really excited and ready to go. Turn your head. <laughs> uh -huh. She did stuff that I guess I'd never seen her do before. She got up on a four point posture where she was on her elbows and she was on her knees independently and she was able to start balancing by herself. And, and I'd never seen her, you know, exercise that level of control before. Can you give us a little bit of the shimmy shimmy? Mm -hmm. Wow. Good. Look at that. This is fabulous. Mm -hmm. Movement discoveries like these are crucial bridges to Bridget's future progress, as Bridget's mother, Mary Helen, knows. I was elated. I mean, I was just like almost in tears at points, just, you know, <laughs> watching her do things and watching her face light up and watching the encouragement they give her and she's just feeding off of it. It seems like a huge part of her being successful at achieving something is her motivation. And if she's excited about it and engaged with it, she'll, she'll do all kinds of stuff. It's just a pirate Greek. Can you show me she really likes it? She likes the songs. Sophia's parents, Seema and Sachit, are IT professionals in the UK. The four weeks that they'll spend in Toronto gives them a chance to escape the distractions of everyday life. I feel like focused more being here rather than we are at home and it's, it's a nice change, it's a different environment but she, I think she just thinks she's come to play every day, <laughs> so it's nice, it's nice. There you go. You want to come back? Sophia is at an age where her movements are exploratory. So an early goal is to focus on initiating new movement through play. That's it. That's it. Six, seven, seven. We look to prevent the formation of contractures in her limbs by carefully smoothing out any rough spots in her range of motion. 
For Sophia, the changes were immediate. After the first 10 days, we feel that her core strength uh, has improved. She's sitting up better with, with support. Her motor skills have suddenly improved dramatically. Um, she's starting to reach for things, she's starting to hold things, and she's, she seems to be a lot more aware of her surroundings and her body. It's something that, that requires hard work and repetition. But, but Sophia is happy here. Normally in this field, uh, we talk a lot about developmental milestones. And in our situation, we try to create a different kind of paradigm. And that paradigm has to do with uh, the learning process itself. So rather than necessarily looking at, oh, is this person crawling or is it rolling or whatever, uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how they are processing their information. The connection between body and mind is an active topic in the scientific medical community. Our ecological intervention, called Adapted Spiral Praxis, tries to connect children to the world through their bodies, through movement, bodywork, and play. <laughs> A major part of our work is to make films like this one, communicating the creativity and joy that is an inseparable part of a child's learning experience. Without this happiness, the work of therapy can lose its meaning and power in a child's inner ecology. It's so important, this idea, that kids have a sense that they're progressing. They have to actually feel like they are improving. And if you don't give them that feeling, that's when Everything can just cave in and they give up. Movement has awakened a new enthusiasm in Asher. Patty and Wayne have said that on the first day of class, Asher woke up in the middle of the night and began spontaneously laughing for hours. Well, the first session was remarkable. They swung him in a blanket and he loved it and then they rolled him out of the blanket and put the blanket a few feet away from him and encouraged him to roll back on the blanket for more swinging and he did it. You did it. I think the big difference for me was um, he was working, it was clear, it was hard, it was frustrating, but he was getting a reward at the end of each little sequence of rolling and it was very positive experience for him. Usually that's extremely frustrating because he can't do it. Due to his physical frustration, we focus Asher's first sessions exclusively on rolling. Working in small bursts, we taught him to initiate the rolls from his hips, head, and other parts of his body. After nearly 40 minutes of continuous practice, he began partially rolling on his own. It was the first step in building his confidence. Learning isn't just for kids, but for adults as well. A trip to the local rock gym is a chance for parents to experience the fears and emotions of using their bodies in new and challenging ways, just like their kids. Study of ecology is like, you know, when you study um, forests or something like that. You can study like specific species and stuff, but ecology is when you take a step back and you kind of look at the overall process of how things work, how everything stays in balance. 
Between therapy sessions, Steph and I would often talk with parents to discuss their experiences with traditional therapies. Um, and it was very like a typical therapy, I would call it, where it's like a goal, um, and then getting her as close to achieving that goal as they feel possible through documenting observations. And that's it, very clinical. In hearing their stories, we found that many times the needs of disabled children were not met, despite the wide range of services available. According to Dr. Fesser, part of the problem seems to be in the mechanization of children's services. The biggest change from back in the day is um, regulation. Um, we were not, uh, not nearly as regulated as we are now. Now there are I mean, back then you, you were free to ex explore, you try new things. Now, there's so many rules and regulations that you have to meet in order to, to get funded, in order to be compliant. It really clamps down on creativity and spontaneity. So I'm starting the game. I'm starting. I'm starting. I'm starting. Two weeks into the intensive, Amaya has still not overcome the effects of the trauma of her past therapies. She's been shutting down in the middle of class. Today, we find a breakthrough by freeing class structure, bringing in more staff, and opening up her love of music and art. Medium. Up. Up. Later in the week, Amaya seems a new child. By focusing on her interests in flow, years of pent-up repression has released. For Kavita, it's been a revelation. I'm learning so much. I can just see her doing everything we want her to do without any kind of effort. I think there is a huge shift in her mental aspect towards uh, working off her body and allowing us to work in her body. I still do have expectation, but uh, I'm beginning to enjoy this process, you know, and not be time bound. My perspective changed dramatically because I think I started experiencing her pain and her uh, fears. It's not about what I want her to do, but it's about doing what she wants to do. The focus here has shifted for me from the end point to the process. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm liking. <laughs> yeah. Another big development has been Amaya's acceptance of touch. I, I can't believe the shift that's happened. Amaya was petrified of any kind of massage or touch and here she is relaxing and enjoying and letting Yuji work on her. Today is the first day. It's fantastic. Ava's first sessions involved a lot of hands-on guidance and cueing. Her mother Jessica says that she's never been engaged in class for a full hour, and we work hard to keep her energy focused. Yes, hand, foot. I've worked with a lot of physiotherapists um, in our town, and they've kind of said to me, like, Ava is really active, she's doing really well physically, gross motor-wise, like, there's nothing that we can really work on right now. And the stuff that they instantly were able to get her to do and connect with her kind of blew my mind how much they could, I guess, communicate with her through movement. Head down. Good girl. Yeah. At the end of it, I was like, oh, Ava speaks gross motor. <laughs> and so do you, Yuji and Stephanie. So that was really amazing for me. Nine, 
Two weeks later, Ava is quickly showing true independence with her body. She does activities going from point A to point B by herself for the entire class. Every day I'm seeing new things with Ava. I haven't known how to connect her body and mind, and now I feel like that's honestly what's kind of happening. And it's intentional. Like, she is trying to get somewhere in a different way. I have, like, this really strong feeling um, that this is going to help Ava connect with herself and we're going to see more communication. Like I said, I'm just really inspired now, so I feel like if we can be dedicated when we get home, I'm just seeing a lot of doors open for her. What can you ever do best? Forward, flex, extend, rotate, side, side to side. Like On the weekends, the parents attend workshops to learn more about somatic principles and body work techniques. Another important goal is to develop a greater understanding of how children with disabilities might perceive the world by participating in experiential physical activities. In your mind, I want you to visualize this kinosphere. And I want you to start to mimic your child and start to see if you can imagine how they might be moving. What are they struggling with? If they're hesitant with their body, how, how do you think that would affect their mind? Are nervous or upset? Like to just close in, and when you're happy to like bring in. Yeah. And I was like, oh, like I could see how able Ava is nonverbal, like in her movements. With the summer intensive more than halfway done, the parents are already developing plans to continue working with their children when they return home. Lesson plans, buying movement equipment, finding skilled helpers is all part of keeping the spirit of group ecology alive. Of course, the ultimate goal is for the parents to learn enough while they're here so that they can continue with their children's progress at home. Malia to continue and trying to bring on that inner dancer is making her very happy. Nobody ever termed her a dancer, Yuji did. I think she feels a sense of accomplishment and that she can achieve because she's pushing through some challenging things and she's just so happy through it. Being a dancer means teaching Malia how to refine and better control her movements. Since she's already well coordinated and motivated, the exercises she learns emphasize grace, balance, and whole body awareness. Stop. <coughs> Two, three, four, five, Walking is a huge goal for Malia. Right now, it takes four people to help her with her balance and alignment. Every step, every movement has to be just right. We mark the final week of the intensive with an art project showing the children's movement through paint. Each child is showing new signs of confidence and independence. They're starting to reach important physical milestones that will help them move forwards into the future. 
with each stroke of paint, with each movement leaving its trace. The painting symbolizes each child's hard-earned progress found during the month. The last day of group classes is filled with dances and performances. Each child has grown used to showing what they've learned in their individual sessions. Ava with her jumping and hopping. Bridget with her newfound strength. Little Sophia with her yoga. And Malia has even learned a small dance. Bridget's body has come alive in the final week. She's learned how to fully extend her arms in space. She's rolled spontaneously from her back to her front. And she's learned how to sit by herself for the first time. One important skill that saluted her was rolling from her front to back. Through sheer determination, she found it in the final week. Use everything to get yourself over, everything. Uh-huh. Good. All the way, all the way. Head to it, head to it, head to it, head to it. Yes! Yeah. Asher, 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 Asher. Yay! Good boy! Come on. Come on, Asher. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Woo! Asher's begun to roll consecutively by himself without help. He's now expanded his movement vocabulary to include more difficult locomotive patterns. He's no longer afraid or frustrated to explore new movements. I've never seen him stay sitting that long. And I just think it's more the confidence that I'm really seeing that he's confident that he can do the moves and happy about it. Little Sophia has taken to yoga. She's doing more than 10 poses in every class and it's strengthened her posture and head tail control. She's also starting to move with the seed of intention. Sophia is learning how to become very intentional with her movement. That was the first time that she's actually spent, like, had the concentration to go after something for a whole length of mat by herself. So that's fantastic. Ava's journey has led her to find control and concentration in her movement. Just looking at her face, Jessica can see her focus and self-regulation, even in the unfamiliar environment of a city park. Oh yeah, like it's difficult. Wow. She doesn't like to play at parks. Like sometimes I'll climb through tunnels with her and I'll do make like everything I can to make it fun. I'll give her candy, <laughs> things like that. You should do that. Pick a park, maybe yeah. it doesn't have a swing, because yeah. you know she always goes there. Open up some area for her. Amanda's gonna walk to the center and then we're gonna use our feet to walk to the center. Up to this point, Ava has always traveled in a stroller, except for the shortest distances. Today, she's walking back to the studio over several city blocks. Usually it's very difficult, I'm fighting Ava off being carried or her sitting on the ground. And she walked holding my hand and it was like a very typical interaction that other parents and children have. And it was, I was just really happy. I never really stopped to think like, 
I've been doing so many hours of therapy and, and nobody's been able to get Ava's attention. So it kind of had to change my, like shift the way I think of therapy. Quality over quantity. Amaya did many things. Amaya's not scared anymore. Amaya learned to walk and jump and go backwards and climb. And now you like it. It's fun. It's not scary anymore. I am very sad. I am very sad because I've seen my daughter blossom here. Every day we would look forward to coming here and doing something. There have been so many wonderful moments of realization for me. How can we make it fun? How can we make it loving and motivating for them to go from where they are ahead to where we want them to. For Amaya, I see her challenging herself a lot more. Her body language has changed. She is calm. She is out there having fun. Everybody loves movements. Our children also love it. I want Amaya to walk independently. That's my major goal. I am hoping and praying and I know Yuji and Stephanie will be able to get the best out of her and I want her to take that first step. Pull. Go. Yeah, you gotta get your bum up. Bum up? That's it. Oh, this is new. Wow. How are you doing that? <laughs> <laughs> On the last day of Malia's class, her father has come back from California to watch her. Donna says that Malia is sensing the end of the intensive and that she's very emotional. She's afraid that Malia won't be able to perform at her best. You want to show your dad the dance? I do. <laughs> All we can do is... Or we can do walking. What do you want to do? You want to walk? Okay, let's do walking. Up to this point, Malia has needed more than one person to balance while walking. Today, for the first time, she surprises us by deciding to use only Stephanie to walk across the room. Who can know what learning is? At the end of four weeks, the children have watered their plants for the last time. How will their progress during the summer affect their future? Will they continue the gains they've made? Each parent leads with their own impressions and plans for what the future holds. Asher loves to move. He loves to be active and play. And my feeling is that if he can really learn, and I think he is really learning to roll a few times, scoot across the floor, that will bring us so much joy to his life. I think it's been really valuable um, being part of this group because we've met quite a few parents that have been on a journey. 
and parents have given us invaluable advice on, on things we can do to for our child to meet their milestones. Yeah, it's, it's been an invaluable experience that we've, we've, we can mm. take back with us. We'll be doing it every day. I'm going to reduce the time that she's in school and then put the movement therapy into her morning routine. And I'm just hopeful that maybe we can work out something where I get more training, more knowledge, because what they do is like nothing I've ever seen and it really is amazing to watch. And just, to, just for people to learn how to engage with a child. Like, I don't think people understand or appreciate how difficult that can be, especially with a child with, on the autism spectrum. So much of the touch that I have with her is moving her from place to place or changing her diaper or changing her clothes. Or it's necessary. And now I find that I'm just sitting with her and I'm just, you know, massaging her or, I mean, it's more of just a love and it's a peace and I felt like, I, I don't know, I feel maybe a little bit more like I know how to be with her. <laughs> there you go. In this film, we've tried to show that when teachers, parents, and children work together and create a collective ecology, wonderful things can happen with a child's progress and learning. We can never forget that working with children with disabilities and special needs is a creative process that must evoke a child's awareness and sense of wonder. With love and care, dedication and hard work, even the most difficult challenges that our children face can be handled with joy and a feeling of hope for the immense mystery of life. Thank you.